Every spring, whooping cranes, North America's tallest birds, take flight on an arduous 2,500 mile long migration, leaving the Texas Gulf Coast where they've spent the winter, bound for the boreal wilderness of Northern Canada. For thousands of generations through the millennia, these rare birds once soared across much of North America. Today, the once vast grasslands and wetlands they relied on are nearly gone. Now, they're restricted to a narrow corridor. Using data from GPS trackers, we've recreated their nearly six week long journey. Among the flock is a trio I've dubbed the church family, a mother, father, and their nine month old. Mother and daughter are two of the 47 whoopers that have been tagged. The white and red lines trace their paths. On day one, their flight path bends away from Dallas-Fort Worth. They spend their first night along the Brazos River. Young cranes learn from their parents how to migrate and navigate the landscape. Identifying stopover sites is particularly vital. The next one is 300 miles away. Whooping cranes typically cruise at altitudes of 1,000 to 3,000 feet, reaching speeds of 50 miles per hour. Though altitude and speed may vary widely as they dodge thunderstorms and the strong winds of Tornado Alley. The landscape below, a seemingly endless patchwork of the agricultural grid, was once prairie. They leave their roost on the Canadian River spending over nine hours aloft before settling in along the Platte River, joining hundreds of thousands of sandhill cranes that make up the largest gathering of cranes in the world. The next morning, they lift off and fly to the sweeping grasslands of the Nebraska Sandhills. They press on into South Dakota, crossing the mighty Missouri River where they will pause. They've reached the midpoint. The first few days are for rest and refueling. The cranes have successfully run the gauntlet to get this far, but another threat looms. A historic blizzard is building with 60 mile per hour winds and two feet of snow drifting to eight. Mother and her daughter stay put in South Dakota. They won't climb above the front. Fortunately, there's an abundance of food. After nearly three weeks, the weather improves and some of the cranes head north. Another surge follows three days later. Four days after that, the church family takes flight in an exodus from the Dakotas that includes almost all of the rest of the whooping cranes fitted with trackers. The whoopers, on the move for a month, have made it to Canada, pausing among the prairie pothole wetlands, crucial stepping stones that dot the landscape. For the church family, the end of their journey is near as they enter the boreal forest. So too is their time together. More than 30 days into the migration, and for the first time in her life, the young crane flies away from her parents. By nightfall, they are 300 miles apart. The next morning dawns with yet another obstacle. The group pushes north into the oil sands, one of the largest petroleum extraction operations on Earth. Forests cleared, rivers contaminated, wetlands degraded. Within a couple of hours, safely past the industrialized landscape, they soar into Wood Buffalo National Park. The next day, May 1st, they leave the roost at 10 a.m. and fly for the entire day, finally landing at 9.04 p.m., where they will spend the summer. 37 days, some 2,500 miles. The data paint a picture, 47 whooping cranes, each with their own story. For the church parents and dozens of other cranes, it's time to rear the next generation so that by the fall, they will take flight and follow their parents south on the next migration, where they will once again seek out safe havens 
along an increasingly confined flight path through the Great Plains, using a tenuous and ever-changing network of hundreds of stopovers, all vital to surviving the long journey ahead.